You are now listening to Vigilantes Radio, presented by the only one media group. This is the people's choice for quality interviews, celebrities and special guests. Hosted by Demetrius Dinny Reynolds. Call in to join the mix at 701-801-9813. For the complete archive of episodes, visit onlyonemediagroup.com and be sure to like us on Facebook at Vigilantes Radio. We welcome all. Enjoy the show. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome your host, Demetrius Houdini Black Reynolds. Enjoy the show. Yo, it's the host, Houdini Mussolini. What is up, guys? There are over 37,000 of you guys on the phone lines with us tonight. Some of you guys are in the chat room, on the browser, on the phones. Oh, my goodness, in Google Hangouts. And I just appreciate you guys as always because you make this thing so awesome to do almost every night. So, you know, pat pat yourself on the back, really. <laughs> nah, really. Um, remember, guys, that results are what count. It doesn't really matter how you get them as long as it's not illegal, immoral, or unethical. What results are you getting? Just staying busy is not the point. Just passing time is not enough unless you're getting results. The bigger difference you can make, the more fulfilled and abundant your life will be. So what are you doing to make a difference today? Keep your eye on the results and you'll stay on track to accomplishment. Keep the end result in mind and you'll avoid getting sidetracked into activities that don't accomplish anything. Look at your work, your life, your family. Are you getting the results that you want? If not, then it is time to adjust your actions. There's no point in continuing to do anything that doesn't get you where you want to be. Mm. Decide what results that you want and then adjust your actions to get them. Take that from me, Dini Mussolini. That is my word, and word is bond. You're live in the mix. Let's get this started. Yo, hello and welcome to another awesome episode of Inside the Music or Inside the Book, Inside the Business, where we dive into the minds of the people who create marvelous things. It feels so good to be back with you guys once again. One time, one time for my people who are indigos, crystalline or star seeds, or for my vigilantes audience family. And two times for my people who are vegetarian or vegans. If you're like me, we are averaging over 37,000 live listeners and we've been at this for four solid years. I appreciate all you guys who've been rocking with the kid on this journey and we are still evolving, baby. It is all because of you, most definitely. We are the people who have dedicated their lives to music, spirituality, business, literature, art, movies, and research in every aspect. And we want to allow you and our opportunity to tell your story man we've had celebrities on our show from grammy award winning artists to nominees to actors comedians ceos technology geniuses visual artists from authors to professors and aliens or people think they're aliens it doesn't matter who you are or where you come from come on our show and talk to me so check it out to book your interview or just to share a real cool story email me at the radio at only one media group.com and that's v as in victor i'm passionate about what i do just as passionate about what you do and together yes together we can get your voice heard by the people who should hear it so let's create something incredible you know the number to dial 701-801-9813 Text that number to your buddy right now and tell them to tune in to connect with us or our guests. Or you can hop in the mix directly from my website, onlyonemediagroup.com. Right from the homepage, you can slap that go live button and you'll be right here live in the mix and in the chat room with all of us. Feel free to shoot over some questions to ask our guests while they are here. But only as time permits, sometimes my guests and I talk entirely too much and we take up the entire hour. And as always, all episodes are available 
for free download and you can grab that from either spricker.com forward slash only one media group itunes youtube or any app from the google play or itunes store or over at our website and that goes for every single episode that we ever aired well tonight's interview is the be chill interview and you guys are in for an incredible treat i tell you you don't want to miss this at all so if you're like texting or you know uh, facebook or youtube man just put all that down and just you know you know grab your drink brewski or wine whatever water maybe and have a sit down and listen all right so as part of our ongoing commitment to like helping uh undiscovered musical talent get exposed worldwide and sometimes as you know talent has been discovered you know we interview them all um vigilantes radio will post interviews regularly with like in-depth questions and answers and pass them on to you the music lovers so take some time pull up a chair to hear about a great artist um that you might not heard before or you may have because there's like thirty-seven thousand uh, we're breaking records so maybe they're all for him and not for Dini. I'm a little jealous now, but um, I'll get over it, right? So um, tonight uh, we are interviewing the rapper and producer Be Chill. So with that, let's go ahead and welcome him to, him to the show. Be Chill, you're now live with all of us. How's it going? I'm doing pretty good, Big Dog. What's happening with you? Oh man, you got it, you got it, you got it. So we're like practically neighbors. Um, you're from Louisiana, right? Yes, correct. I'm a kid from Mississippi, right next door. All right. Okay, yeah. then what part of Mississippi? Jackson. Jackson. Yep. Oh, yeah, I got people in Jackson. We're like two hours from Jackson. Really? Wow. Yeah. All right. All right, that's what's up. Oh, yeah. What's up? So, it's good to have me. I really appreciate being on the show tonight. Oh, definitely, man. We're glad that you're here, man. We're uh, definitely ready to go ahead and dive deep into this interview, man, so we can, you know, find out everything we need to know and, and jam to this tight music you got. Already. Yes, sir. So, man, straight off the bat, man, when did you realize that you wanted to do music for the rest of your life? Ah, oh, man, that's an easy question. Man, I have to say, like, uh, when I was young, bro, I... Uh, I performed the Michael Jackson Man in the Mirror at our uh -huh. school's talent show. And I mean, I love the reaction and, you know, just the love that I got from the crowd. So it's like at that moment, it's like I just became addicted to music. So, you know, definitely started at a younger age. Okay, okay. Michael Jackson, huh? Yeah, Man in the Mirror. <laughs> so, but you turned out to be a rapper and not a singer. Yeah, I'm Why you, why, why you think that? Unfortunately, I couldn't uh, say. <laughs> I tried, but uh, it, it just didn't okay. work out that way. Yeah. <laughs> all right, all right. So, where are you living at now? Um, you uh, know you're from Louisiana. In, uh, yeah, uh, Louisiana, uh, Wisner, Louisiana, uh, currently residing in Atlanta. Okay. That's what I'm why, why the change? Well, I mean, Atlanta right now, is it's, it's the scene. I mean, that's, you know, Atlanta holds the throne for music. You know, uh, definitely getting out of Louisiana uh, to just kind of get exposed to a, uh, just a different scene, uh, become, a, you know, just getting into a different culture. So right now, Louisiana, I mean, uh, Atlanta is where it's popping. So I'm, yeah. I'm there. All right. So, like, we could we could look on TV and, you know, kind of uh, look at how Atlanta is set up. I've been there a few times uh, in my heyday when I was rapping and stuff. And then, you know, uh, back in the day, ATL used to be kind of like New York and Cali, like a music uh, mecca. Is it still the same? Yeah, yeah. It, it, I mean, it, it just never left. I mean, it's, I think once it came to Atlanta, like, they just held on to it. They never let it go. Okay. You know, so they, I think they're just being a little selfish right now. <laughs> yeah. Now, I, I can see that as far as, like, music. But it's thing like all the, all the artists that do like you know get a lane or blow up, they kind of migrate to either New York or California, or, you know Hollywood especially. Why do you uh, think that yeah, is? I, I I have no idea because I wonder that a lot. I mean, because I say you know Atlanta, I guess maybe you know maybe California is more for like just a mainstream presence. I want to say. Yeah. And you know, like Atlanta, just like home for business and party and just kind of getting away. I got gotcha, you. Know, I got gotcha. you. Yeah, yeah, that's that's my opinion. I don't know. All right. 
All right, so let's hear it from you directly, like just a simple question, really. Um, but we want to hear it from your perspective and definition. Like define censorship. I know there's a lot of this going on, fake news and all that kind of stuff. Um, do you experience any? Like, are you having to walk on eggshells with your words, your posts, even if it's just like a you know simple post on social media so you don't offend anybody? Are you feeling like the need to watch what you say? Yeah, definitely as as always, man, because like you never know who's watching you and you know, simply like on Facebook, there's been time I probably say something uh that I probably shouldn't have said on Facebook and maybe somebody would either say, Well, you know, I I seen the post or maybe they like it and I'm like, Oh man, I forgot they were watching. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? So and then, you know, plus you know, I have kids and stuff like that, uh, that's actually on on Facebook and Instagram. So it's like, you know, I have to present myself in a more professional manner. Mm-hmm. Uh, you never know. It's like what you say or do now could come back and haunt you. So at least I would like to have some great things come back to haunt me and not something bad that I said that was just kind of ridiculous and stupid. You know, yeah, I don't yeah. really get too much into the political thing because everybody just has, it's too many opinions when it comes to political. So I would just pretty much, I, I just sit back and pay attention to what's going on, but uh, I kind of just keep my mouth closed when it come to that. Definitely. All right. Yeah. So what, what's your level of petty like, though? Um, and I'll tell you mine. Like, I'm on, like, seven, a level seven petty. Now, I don't get petty, though, on social media. Never. Even when, yeah. you know, somebody rubs me the wrong way and I have, like, the best comeback ever. I don't I don't troll anybody and I don't get petty online and and I don't you know shoot fire through text message or, or, or phone call well I, I'll pick up the phone and call you but I kind of refrain from being petty but my level is up there I can really go at it uh, what's your level of petty man I think it can kind of just bounce around spectrums so, uh, social media I definitely try to keep that like to a zero if possible you know, because mm-hmm. I know everybody has things to say. A lot of people are always in their feelings. Mm-hmm. I just try to just just try to keep it professional as possible. I mean, as long as you can do that, I think you always kind of stay clear of a lot of things. You know, uh, text message. I don't really like doing a text message as much uh, because mm-hmm. depending on how a person is feeling and their mood, I mean, they could take that any kind of way. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So yeah, I'm, I'm kind of like you, man. I would rather just like pick up the phone. Like, yeah, you know yeah. what the deal is we got a problem let's go ahead and get this thing corrected now yeah man like the test messages are uh, like <laughs> I just don't understand how people can pick up emotions from like a message uh, especially with my wife man she's like why you got attitude I'm like yo yeah, oh, I didn't text you with <laughs> exclamation points or all caps how you know what yeah. my tone of voice is you know she's like I can hear you yeah. say it I'm like oh whatever you know there's no attitude yeah, that, yeah we definitely have to stay away from that lane yeah man yeah mm-hmm. alright so how has like the reaction been to your music are people like slowly gravitating to who you are and who you trying to be or how, how's how's it going for you well you mean I mean uh, I mean as always when you first start out with anything you know it's like you know people are always kind of skeptical of what you're doing and so it's like sometimes you have to do things to just kind of make people out of a believer um, yeah but to be honest, like, I feel like people are slowly warming up to be chill in my music. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like with time and consistency, you know, it'll all work out in my favor. But for right now, it's just all, you know, work and grind. Yeah, yeah. Now, I'm going to get all Oprah-like on you. Now, you mentioned that, you know, people can be skeptical. But are you skeptical of yourself? No, nah, I'm confident. Cool. Definitely really confident. I mean, I've, I've, I've been doing this for a little while, man. And, you know been a lot of ups and downs I learned a lot mm-hmm. so it, you know it, it really groomed me into to be a great artist and a person in general so you know I learned not to really be skeptical of myself but just more confident when you be confident of yourself it's like there's nothing nobody can do to really try to steer you in the wrong direction because you know where mm-hmm. you're going in life you know yeah definitely so, man, I got see you probably a superhero or something like that so you know you're not like man. I, it would be <laughs> nice, but unfortunately, I'm not. <laughs> yeah. I'm telling you, man. You know how, man. It's like self doubt can really creep up in your system, man, and you know, kind of, kind of make you look at things differently. Um, I guess from the eyes of a naysayer, perhaps. 
but uh confidence just doesn't come overnight so if you had to give advice to like an artist who who was just now like saying okay i want to do this music thing what would be like something you would tell them on the base basis of like gaining confidence i'd be like on a scale from one to ten how confident are you in yourself that you can do what you claim you want to do Mm -hmm. that just that just point blank i mean you have to know okay if i'm gonna be a drummer I have to feel that I'm the best drummer in the world. You know what I'm saying? Even though I may not be, but I have to feel that way in order to pursue it because if I don't, it'll be a lot easier to let other people sway you. Like, oh man, like, you're not really that good. And then you're like, okay, well, maybe I'm not that good. Maybe that's not what I need to do. You know what I'm saying? So you gotta, you gotta definitely believe in yourself first and foremost. Word up. Word up. Yeah. Where do you currently like practice your material and how do you know like a song of yours is ready to go to the studio to record? Uh, to be honest, man, I'm always in a studio. I have my okay. own home recording studio. Yes. Um, I, yeah, I've been in recording for a minute. Uh, actually, uh, have a degree from Full Sail University, so I'm definitely nice. certified. Uh, so it's like, you know, my, my home studio, I'm just pretty much there all the time. That's why it's pretty much... Uh, I create music, write some music, uh, yeah, pretty much from start to finish. And on the case, you know, I, I usually go to a, you know a, a bigger studio so that way I can make sure, like when I'm doing mixes or having someone else to perform my mixes, making mm -hmm. sure my stuff has that that final finish to it. Definitely. What would you say is the biggest challenge that you face as an artist in the uh, ATL area um, so far? Would be uh, the biggest challenge, uh, just basically uh, trying to break through the scene, you know, because ATL is very competitive, mm -hmm. and there's a lot of uh, rappers, per se, in Atlanta, and so, you know, the, the thing is, it's like, you know, you have a million people, but somehow you have to figure out, to be, figure out a way to become just that one mm -hmm. that can shine, you know, throughout all of that. So yeah, like my biggest challenge is like you know just really trying to break through the crowd to be seen. You have a plan for that? Right now, man, uh, the biggest thing is like just being me, being the person that I am. Make great music because it all starts with great music, you know. Oh yeah. And uh, right now, I'm just like it's just I'm in marketing mode right now. It's like I'm mm. beast mode right now. So the yeah. thing is like getting myself heard wherever I can be heard, wherever I can be seen doing that because the more people see you the more they're going to be curious like oh, I want to what do this dude do mm -hmm. you feel what I'm yeah, saying yeah. like okay well yeah. oh he say he rap okay let me check him out see what because I'm tired of seeing it let me see what he about right you know? yeah. yeah yeah definitely stand on the ground yeah, yeah. so you, you kind of like on a presidential campaign you're out meeting the people interviewing shaking hands kissing babies that type of thing right yes you have to you have to get oh, yeah. up close and personal with people you know, it's yeah. it's, it's a lot of internet people, internet rappers and stuff. And it's like people want to see somebody. They want to feel your story. They want to they want to feel like okay, this guy's on my level. He's one from. Mm -hmm. He's been where I've been. Yeah, yeah. You're definitely right, man. Personality kind of sells before the music do nowadays. Yes, definitely. So, how important are lyrics in your song? Oh, uh, lyrics is. Sometimes important, sometimes not as important. It just depends on the type of song. Mm -hmm. uh, I've found, I've come to find that a lot of club songs don't really have much substance when it comes to lyrics. Right, it's all right. about the beat. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you go to the club, I mean, you're not, you know, checking for a lyricist, but they wanna they wanna feel something. They wanna feel their body just moving. So at that point of time, like with certain club songs, I feel like lyrics really don't mean much. You can just repeat a word a hundred times in a song and, it, and it, you're good. Mm -hmm. uh, then I feel like, you know, when you start getting into the commercial type of scene, you know, I think like music and lyrics, it's like goes hand in hand to make a great song. Mm -hmm. uh, so I feel like that way it's like, it's like a 50-50, like lyrics become really important in that song. Yeah. As a songwriter, ha have you ever had to like rewrite something because of maybe oh. a, a trend or it just didn't come out as, you know, wasn't hitting hard enough or maybe it was a little too honest and you had to dumb it down a bit? 
Man, I, I do that all the time. I mean, yeah. there's times when I, I do a song and I might write either that same verse or maybe the whole entire song at least five to ten times. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm, I am my biggest competitor. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I'm, I'm sorry, my biggest competition. I'm always competing with myself. So when I do something, I feel okay. Well, maybe I can do it better. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I, I do a track, I lay the track down, and I feel like, okay, man, maybe I can do this and make it better. Man, the beat just ain't hitting hard enough. So I'm kind of the same way when it comes to, you know, when I'm writing my lyrics. I want to make sure that, hey, if somebody did hear this record, would I be confident that I did everything I could to make that record stand out? Did mm-hmm. I do everything to make sure that was 100%? Right. That's right. So, yeah. Yeah, like some indie artists have like a hard time in the industry, but don't get me wrong. At the end of the day, I'm as do it yourself or indie as a person can be and always think that there's a route. That's the route to go personally. Um, What has your experience shown you to be uh, like the biggest benefits of keeping your music independent and do it yourself? Uh, The biggest benefit is basically doing what you want to do, releasing the music that you would like to release. Uh, Cause I know, like as being an artist, sometimes we're more personal with our music, and there's certain things that we want people to hear. But usually, like when you get with labels, like they kind of say, "Okay, well, this is what needs to be put out," and you may not want this. Like you may have a song that's really personal to you that you want people to hear, but you can't do that. So it's like being independent is really great for that reason, being able to control more of your interests. Um, right. Right. But. As being independent, it does always come with, you know, little different downfalls. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, now, as I was looking into you, um, I didn't notice, like, a lot of collabs with artists out there. Um, is there a reason for that? Uh, no, nah, not really. I mean, when it kind of, when it comes to collaborations, you know, there's always a benefit and but they say pros and cons per se. Uh, I think sometimes it's great uh, to collaborate, especially with maybe bigger artists uh, for a reason of fan base. Uh, that's like pretty much like one of the biggest reasons. Uh, and sometimes, you know, it's not as good because you really want to, you don't want to be overshadowed by your features. Mm. So it's like, you know, you have to learn how to balance between the two, you know, if you're going to collaborate or not collaborate. Mm-hmm. So is it safe to say Be Chill doesn't work well with others or play well with others? <laughs> oh, no, I work. I, nah, I just definitely kidding, work man. well with others. Yeah, yeah I, just I kidding, definitely bro. work well. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I'm definitely interested in your perspective, like regarding the people. You're a producer, right? Yeah. Yeah. So people, like certain people argue that music can only exist with like live drums, bass, guitar, piano, that kind of thing. Like, I call them the plugged-in purists. Um, my own music a uh, time ago largely fell into like a particular genre that you do. And I know what I would say to validate the existence of hip-hop music being music. Um, but what would you say about it, B-Chill? You're a producer. Um, just because it's not plugged in doesn't mean it's any less valid or real, does it? Nah, not actually. I mean, uh, I don't honestly think that all music... I mean, to be honest, like, they, there's... I love a lot of piano ballads. And I love, mm-hmm. like, just like, uh, per se, I have a song that I did. Um, I forgot what the name of the song is. But anyway, it was... Uh, just a piano piano yeah. some simple strings and that was it and oh and a bass line because I think a bass line is because sometimes to me takes place of a drum because uh, right, right. bass really brings out the emotions of a song but yeah a piano some strings and a bass man I mean what you need drums for like you don't always have to have drums mm-hmm. you know sometimes it's just emotion people just want to feel emotion and if maybe a piano or just say just some strings by itself or just an acapella, it really doesn't matter. So I, I don't think like instruments per, per se um, defines, you know, music, what is music. I totally agree, man. Totally agree. So on the show front, um, or just in general, what have we got on the horizon for you in terms of short-term goals? 
Short term goals, man, is definitely uh, getting uh, getting people familiarized with who I am. Mm-hmm. Uh, I definitely want people to know that because until they know that, it's kind of hard to want to listen to B. Chill's music. So short term goal is just really getting out there and getting people familiarized with who B. Chill is. Any shows coming up? Right now, that's that's to be announced. Uh, we're working on some promo runs right now. Uh, got the new single. Uh, that's actually uh, dropping tomorrow, June first. My first single, Talk Back, featuring nice. uh, Juvenile. So yeah, uh, we definitely are uh, working on the promo run for that, and uh, we're trying to put together some some cities in in uh, Georgia and the surrounding state. So definitely be on the lookout for that one. Definitely. Is this single like from an EP or an album? It's from my album. Uh, it, it started out with just a single. I was just going to drop a single. Then it went from a single to an EP. Mm. Then I got so much music. I feel like, man, an EP just is not, a, it's not enough. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. I, I need people to hear a little more. So it went to eight songs. And then we just capped it off at 10. Like, you know, it's enough is enough. We're going to end up like pop with a double disc in a minute. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, yeah, definitely from the album. What's the name of the album? The Artistry. What's ah, the name cool. of the album? When it's dropping. Yeah. Uh, the, the artistry right now is just like it's up in the wind right now yeah uh, you gotta do all this presidential on. campaigning right yeah definitely cause we want it to be great man I want it to be yeah. like my first one out and be like Nelly bro just like oh, man, man. I wanna go double triple platinum yeah yeah but uh, yeah definitely uh, yeah you know just trying to take it slow you know not trying to really just like go out there and spoil the moment by you know coming out too fast so definitely just a one step at a time Yes, sir. Now we understand that uh, your your style is kind of in the making. Uh, I think I yeah. read it in your write up. Um, but who else could you point out? Like, what artists or groups out there that are making music like you do that deserve some props for a comp- uh, contributing to some kick ass music to this genre? Why well, I, I like to say uh, my artists uh, on my independent label, uh, Lanita Perry, uh, my boy Savage Kid. Platinum Pluto, all those artists from Louisiana, and I uh, got a partner out of Perry, Florida, SB Jones. That dude right there, he, he's a beast. I mean, it's like mm-hmm. they need to really be like looking out for a dude because my boy is hot. Mm. All right, cool deal. Yeah. Uh, what's the name of your label? Uh, it's Capitalized Music. Group. Cool. Are, are you yeah. looking for more yeah. artists? In the label. Now, right now, I kind of got my hands full, just trying to establish myself and, you know, and try to work with my artists as well. Dope. All right, man. We just want to say thank you again. Be chill. It has been an honor getting to hear what you've come up with so far, and I'm looking forward to more. But for now, we'll say uh, not really goodbye just yet because we still need you for something else. But we just want to thank you for your time and answers and allow you our open floor. This is where you can say anything you want to shout out uh, websites or bring up something that we totally missed that you just wanted to say or if you got something that you want to rant rave or praise about you know go ahead man the floor is yours okay well first and foremost i just like to say you know thank god my savior and jesus christ for such a wonderful opportunity mm-hmm. uh like I say uh shout out to my girl which is the backbone to this movement and i'm around shonda heard for staying with me making sure I stay grounded and polished, you know what I'm saying? And uh, shout out to all my fans, my future fans. Uh, definitely have to give a special shout out to Vigilantes Radio for having me. Yes, sir. Uh, big shout out to Starlight Music Marketing for doing such a wonderful job on this thing. All my fans, future fans, y'all can catch me on I-M-B-T-L, I-A-M-B-C-H-I-L. 1L. You can catch me on Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, you name it. I'm right there. I am Beach Hill. Yeah, yeah. And guys, just in case you didn't get those links, I have them in the uh, description of this episode. So all you have to do is click the link. Don't worry about the spelling. I did all that hard hard work for you guys. It's all typed up, all pretty nice and neat for you. Just click it. All right. Take it right to it. No excuses. All right, guys. After the music break, it'll be time for our usual tradition. It is called the hot seat. 
and our fans love this part of the segment and of course along with the actual interview but the audience will get to hear either uh be chill sing well he said he can't sing so don't do that that, <laughs> not, that taking that option away okay yeah. uh maybe you do poetry or inspirational speech maybe you can freestyle rap tell us a joke or two tell us a story love stories i have popcorn uh or maybe uh even play a live instrument where you never know what these creative minds and vessels will produce in the spotlight and tonight we'll find out if be chill has what it takes to be put on the spot a test of a true artistry and maybe even some hidden talent for right now we have be chill talk back featuring my man juvenile we'll be right back I'm talking hands on the wall, make it top back. She at the floor set it all, make it top back. I'm talking hands on the wall, make it top back. She at the floor set it all, make it top back. I'm talking hands on her knees, she make it top back. She make it wild before she not make it top. She make it top back, from it, make it top back. She make it top back. See you looking like you want some, been in it. Go and let me see you go and twerk some, baby. You the one, they ain't lying, you the sickest. But only for the night, maybe you can be my missus. I like it when you drop it like it's hot, baby. Kudos, I can throw this cash at that, baby. Who knows? You know what it is. Let me slide and make a boost. Booty so soft, yeah, loose as a goose. I put Juvie on the train, now I'm moving that ass up. While they know that brown, baby, go on back that ass up. Show me what you bout. You ain't messing with no amateur. I throw that thing on me, yeah, I'm guaranteed to handle ya. Chill, baby, I'm all the way out here. Yeah. Hit it on the couch, yeah. Get a little mouth, yeah. Bing, bang, on her. Put that pound game on her. Now turn it up like a bottle of Corona. Make it talk to me. I'm talking hands on the wall. Make it top back. She at the floor and set it all. Make it top back. I'm talking hands on her knees. She make it top back. She make it wild before she not make it top. She make it talk back. From me, make it talk back. She make it talk back. From me, make it talk back. She make it talk back. From me, make it talk back. Like you don't want fuck me, you obligated. You wildin', baby, I will have you discombobulated. What is your ingredients? Hope it's not sweet and sour, baby. Spending my dollars, baby, I'm trying to be compensated. Tell hey, you what you gon' do, show me what you made of. You gon' throw that out, tell me I'ma throw this paper. You can get a bag if that bitch ain't got no rash. If you ain't got no rash, I won't throw up out now. You tryna make some cash, and I just wanna smash. Take you out together, put design on your work. But really, I shouldn't be wasting my time on your work. Cause I don't know how many to do the climb on your work. And you can't hold a whole conversation when you shaking. Hey, them, get the talk and let them listening to your statements. You want me to wait for you? I ain't got them kind of patience. Keep making that up, talking. I'ma put you in rotation. Make it talk for me. I'm talking hands on the wall. Make it talk back. She at the floor and set it all. Make it talk back. I'm talking hands on her knees. She make it talk back. She make it wild before she not make it talk back. She make it talk back. From me, make it talk back. She make it talk back. From me, make it talk back. She make it talk back. From me, make it talk back. something for the south 
Oh yeah, talk back. Yo, if you're from the South, Florida, Mississippi, Alabama, Arkansas, Texas, Louisiana, I know you're out of your seat right now. Because I was. Man, what a fire track. Talk back, that was Beach Hill featuring Juvenile. Man, they killed it. Hands down, they killed it. Like, I just wanted to be in a club at that moment. I haven't been to a club in years. Well, I have, but I haven't been to, like, where I'm not working. Yeah, if I go to a club, I'm working, you know. But I haven't been to a club to where I'm just enjoying myself. Now, this is a song that I can enjoy myself to because about that time that song comes on, I'm going to have a drink in my hand and I'm be in some girl's face. How about some talk back? Oh, yeah. I think I'm going to go tonight. What's tonight? Thursday? Nah, tomorrow. Yeah, Friday. <laughs> All right. So sometimes you got to um, exploit your weakness. It's good to know your strengths and usually useful to know your weaknesses. For when you're aware of your weaknesses, that's when you're willing to admit them and face them. You've identified a powerful path for personal growth. Take a look at yourself. What is holding you back? What is keeping you from living the life that you want to live? What part of yourself is constantly disappointing you? Be honest with yourself. What is your greatest weakness? I went to see my cousin today. She uh, graduated and lived in a different city. And I just so happened to be in her city today. So I stopped by, gave her a little gift, and I made sure to tell her, because she's also a new mom. She just graduated high school. She's a new mom. Like, look, don't let circumstances tell you you can't have something or deny you from an opportunity. Well, there's a will. There is definitely a way. But you got to see yourself doing it. You got to believe it or it will not work. Magic is cool, but belief is and action is really what magic is, okay? And that's what I told her, and that's what I'm telling you guys. Don't let a circumstance deny you an opportunity or tell you that you cannot do something or cannot have something. That's just that's just foolishness. And that's the trap. That's that cycle. Don't listen to that, you know? So when you know what your weakness is, and it's, it may be procrastination. May, you may be a dope artist, and there's like 50 songs on your hard drive that nobody's heard. Put them things on the internet. Come on now. You got to do it. You know, you know where to put your effort. I mean, you go to work, right? Nine to five. You putting your effort there. And that's that's like aiding somebody else's dream, making somebody else's rich while your dreams are sitting on the back burner. Put the same effort towards your own dreams. You can do both. You can work a nine to five and uh, do your cooking show or your, your modeling career or uh, start a new business, it can happen. It happens every day in America. We make more millionaires than any other country on the planet. It's doable, all right? So if you're great with managing your money but lousy at public speaking or maybe you're great at public speaking but lousy with your money, <laughs> it's time to re- do some calculations, you know, recalculate some things. Uh, it wouldn't, you know, pay you to put effort into improving your speaking skills or it wouldn't hurt to improve your spending skills. You know your wallet needs it. You know you need it in your wallet. Some good money management, you know, but both are doable, right? So we have a tendency to want to do the things we're good at. And indeed, we must make full use of our gifts, but we also must grow. We must learn new things. And that means identifying our weaknesses and working on them so they want, they won't be a weakness. You ever broke your arm? And, you know, one arm is is good, the other one is broken, you know. And after, after a while, after it heals, one arm is weaker and probably smaller than the other. Yeah. I don't know. That happened to me. Seventh grade football. Never again. But one arm was bigger than the other. And now, you know, they're both big because I worked out my weakness after it healed. So that's the same way. That's as, as life, okay? So when you look right at your greatest weakness, decide to do something about it. Suddenly it goes from like a liability to an asset. And if you're into finances, you are definitely about getting assets. And if, no, I ain't going to make that joke. All right, suddenly you have to, <laughs> suddenly you have to like find a way to be highly effective to make a major difference in your life. 
Your weaknesses are lessons waiting to be learned. Take that from me, Dina Mussolini. That is my word, and word is bun. Let's bring the man on. Be chill. You're now live again with us in our hot seat. What do you have for us? Man, you believe in me. You never doubted me. Honestly, I just want to be everything you need. Tell the truth. I can never lie. Baby, you my all. When I fall, you be there to catch me. Answer when I call. After all, you my superstar. I'm your biggest fan. Do my dance. I call you my girl. You call me your man. Ain't no feeling greater than this. I thank God I'm ready for this. All of my life I waited for this. I really don't know why they're hating on this. Hate it or love it, it is what it is. I don't give a damn about what they feel. I'm going to do me. They can be them. Just for your love, I go out on the limb. I hold you down like the way on the pole. All of your love is the way to my soul. Recklessly loving you out of control. You were the one and no need to say more. Vigilante. You. Yeah. Oh, man. I love that flow, bro. I love that flow. <laughs> <laughs> that was dope. That was dope. You survived, man. You survived the hot seat. That's what's up. Yeah, I had to get a fans a little something, man, for my ladies, man. Definitely. You showed yeah. out, man. Show it out. Sir. All right, man. Let everybody know again where they can connect with you. Man, y'all can catch me on Twitter, Instagram, all the social media. I am B Chill. I A M C H I L. One L. Catch me there. Word up, man. We appreciate you, bro. All right. I appreciate y'all for having me. Thank you, my Vigilantes family, as always, for checking out my podcast over here at Vigilantes Radio. All episodes are available for free download, and you can grab that from either Spricker.com forward slash only one media group, iTunes, YouTube, any app that's on a Google Play or iTunes store or our website. And that goes from every single episode that we've ever aired. If you'd like to request music or a particular guest or send something for me to play, email it to vradio at onlyonemediagroup.com. If it's music, please label it by artist and title. Here's my disclaimer. We are genre-free, we do not judge, and we absolutely do not base our opinions on hearsay but facts alone. And actually, you can scratch all of that because all of my opinions are always right. That's the bottom line. This is my show, so deal with it. Nah, just kidding. On behalf of myself, Danny Mussolini, I appreciate all you guys for tuning in either afterwards or live with us. Spread the word because sharing is caring. We stepped up our game just for you guys and our guests to make sure that you have the best experience here on our show. Be sure to connect with us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Tumblr, as well as Spricker. We always follow back. That is the number one rule. Okay, well, just remember to be yourself and be absolutely great at just doing that. Avoid being too comfortable because you're messing with your potential when you do that. Peace and have a good night. And now listening to Vigilantes Radio, the people's choice for quality interviews, art, music, and hot topics. Hosted by Demetrius Houdini Black Reynolds of the duo No Longer The Hero. All episodes of this podcast are available for free download at www.onlyonemediagroup.com. This is a 7th Sign Regime Rebirth Worldwide Syndicate Exclusive.